Today, I'm happy because I get to tell you about a game that is legitimately great, reasonably priced, and good enough to go down alongside games like Minecraft and Dwarf Fortress. I'm not kidding. It's Shadows of a Doubt. So many games are based around crime, both solving them and committing them, but Shadows of a Doubt is the first crime simulator. Each one of these crimes is unique to the player. There's no baby mode guide on the internet for them to look up. I fucking love it. It's not perfect, there are incredibly bad control issues, and a semi-shallow pool of content. But just like Minecraft and Dwarf Fortress, this game's in early access. And just like those games, the base game is so well designed, it actually gives you the hope that it will achieve a similar post-launch success on the level of Minecraft and Terraria. Because it solved the problem with detective games and detective movies. You can only solve a murder one time. It becomes worthless as soon as you get to the end. Playing through a 20-hour story just to get to the same end blows. Or maybe you get to the end of the game and they've made some sort of horrific AI engine to generate endless quests for you that are each more boring than the last. Say what, man? Shadows of a Doubt starts you at that end game. You're off the force, retired, and down on your luck. You don't got a dollar to your name. And then the world generates around you with random bars and random apartments. Then it fills them with unique people. And then it tells you to sit your broke ass down and listen to the police scanner in the hopes that there's a murder. You have to let the game come to you on a job board, in a ringing telephone, or maybe just seeing someone get murdered. And when you do catch a body, there's no game to highlight the evidence that you need or is helpful to the case. No helpful hint to tell you what's out of place. No partner to remind you to take a fingerprint off the mugs. I mean, hell, you can't even legally be at the crime scene. The result is an endless amount of quests that take hours to do. And every once in a while you might hit a dead end, but when you finally crack a case, it gives you such a rewarding feeling that I honestly believe this is the future of quest generation. Imagine playing a game like this, but with your character from Oblivion, or as Adam Jensen. I hope this goes somewhere. I really do because it's so incredibly fun. But just a warning, the performance is absolutely horrible. The game looks good, but there's no real options for the graphics. So if your computer can't handle it like mine, when there's a steam effect, your frame rate drops into toilet. The gamepad controls are horrible. You won't even be able to use half your inventory. But by far the biggest flaw is you can spend hours, hours on a case, going through every lead in detail and not get some crucial piece of evidence you need because it bugged through the wall. But again, this game is an early access, so hopefully that changes. It's such an amazing platform to add more content to. A few more motives for murder, a few more emails, a few more dialogue options here and there. It is literally so good that I might make another video on it. That's how good it is. So please, everybody, buy this game. Make these devs rich so they can give this game the content it needs to change gaming. With the Game Standard here at Tibbs TV, I'm Jonathan Rosenblum.